Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations with Matt DeLockery. Today, I want to talk about atheists, though probably not in the way that you're expecting. You know, given some of the topics I've covered before and, you know, about the truth of Christianity and stuff, you're probably expecting me to talk about how Christianity is true and atheists are wrong and da 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 And that's not where I want to go. I want to talk about the first time that I read a book by an atheist. And it really messed me up. Um, incidentally, this was in the late 2000s, probably around 2007, 8, when the new atheists were just becoming a thing. And I read some of the works by uh, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens, and um, watched some of the debates that they did and so forth. And as I became exposed to that, it really messed me up. Like, I'd grown up in the Christian world, and I had a lot of problems with Christianity and so forth. But it's one thing sort of like taking a look at your own worldview and then having somebody from the outside start talking about things that you've never heard of before, make points that you've never considered. And it can be a little, I guess boat rocking is probably the best way to say it. Because anytime you're forced to consider your worldview, anytime you're forced to think through like, you know, how you live and operate and do your thing and whether your beliefs about, you know, basic things are right. It, it can be really, really tough to deal with because even if you don't necessarily like the way that you're doing things and there's stuff that's wrong, it's it's predictable. You know how things are generally going to go. You know what the flow is. And even if you're not happy with it, you know where the bumps in the road are and, and everything's predictable. But if But if you throw that out the window and go like a new direction, I mean, you could get broadsided and have no idea. And it can be a bit rough. So to continue the story a little bit further, as the first few times that I read uh, something by an atheist, it messed me up. But then as I started reading more and more and more, it was less so. And I'm not trying to go the direction of like, well, Christianity is true and atheism is false. And so that's, you know, so I just stopped having a problem with it because it's clearly wrong. Um, we can have that discussion at some point. but. What I'm really trying to say is that as you become more familiar with something, the rhetoric, the newness, uh, all of that sort of wears off and, and you don't get hit quite so emotionally. You can start to, you know, step back for a minute, look at things logically and try to think, OK, well, how does this really work? Is this true? Is it not true? How does this, you know, imply that I should or should not change my life, my beliefs, so forth? And it's it becomes more intellectual and logical rather than emotional. And when you step out of the realm of emotion, you can consider something for its value and not based on how it affects you, not how much it hurts you. And then you can decide a logical path forward. And I imagine that people who are atheists who consider Christianity do the same thing in reverse. It's going to be about the same. If you read a Christian book that talks about the truth of Christianity or something like that, or why atheism is false, it's going to be kind of damaging the first time you do it. And then, you know, become less so over time as you consider the logic of something rather than you get hit with this emotional intensity of, you know, your world being messed up, of your boat being rocked. And what I want to try to do, what I'm trying to do with this channel is expose you to some new ideas and things that you might not have heard before, because I think we need to open up our worldviews and take a look at them. And it's going to be tough. Um, if you're just beginning to watch this channel, if you've never seen it before, if you've never been exposed to apologetics before on, on any side of any issue, um, if you've never really been presented with somebody else's worldview who's making a case for it, it can be a little rough to hear the first few times. Um, and I'm going to try to do that as, as gently as I can, but there's really no way to get past it except that you have to get used to it. And I've just had a few uh, conversations with people, not really interviews as much. Some of them turn into more interviews. Some of them are going to be more conversations. I want them to be conversational, sort of a back and forth. But I'm not going to put a disclaimer on any of them. I'm not going to say that, well, I agree with this view and I agree and don't agree with that view. I'm not going to tell you ahead of time that I think they're wrong here, not wrong there. I'm not going to give you a warning or a heads up. Uh, number one, that would be to sort of like cut the legs out from under the person that I'm going to have a conversation with before they even get a chance to get started. 
it's going to be for me to tell you why their case is wrong before they even get a chance to make it. I'm not going to do that. That's not fair. Second, I want you to actually think through their points of view. I want you to actually consider their worldviews. And that's not going to be an easy thing to do. But if we're going to, you know, find a good path forward, that we have to do that. So um, no disclaimers, no filters. They're going to say what they're going to say. And I'm not necessarily going to balance every issue. I'm not going to say, well, this person thinks this and this person. So, so next week, I'm going to have somebody who's on the other side. I'm not going to do that for a couple of reasons. One, I don't expect this is your only source of information. If it is, it shouldn't be. Um, but I expect you to, to read and to think and interact with people on a wider scale. So I don't want to have to balance every single thing that I'm, I'm doing. Um, and that gets into the second reason. What I'm doing is not necessarily looking for all sides of an issue and trying to consider them all of, you know, all port, parts of it. I mean, I'd like to. Um, I'm going about this in a different way. I'm trying to find people who are worth you consider whose ideas are worth you considering, um, worth your consideration. Uh, people who have researched in an area, people who have practical experience in an area, people who know what they're talking about or have a viewpoint that that can benefit you to consider. That's what I'm trying to do. And that's how I pick who comes on here. It starts with people I know. Uh, it'll expand beyond that at some point. But it's people's ideas who are worth considering. And I'll go ahead and tell you now, I don't agree with everybody who's going to come on. Um, and frankly, that includes myself. I don't always agree with me. Past me wouldn't agree with what I what I think currently, and future me won't agree with what I think now. Um, and see, and that's another point that I really want to get at. It's it's not about I have these, you know, particular points of view, and here, 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 and, and these are right. It's less about picking a spot and more about a direction. Which way are we going? What does a forward path look like? What does moving forward look like? And so rather than trying to nail down a platform like I'm like I'm a politician trying to make a case, uh, I have some things that I'm pretty sure about, but that's some of those may change and they have in the past. So I see no reason why they wouldn't in the future. I'm trying to think about how to move forward. We've got a lot of serious issues right now that we're trying to come up with answers to. And a lot of times there's really not good answers to them. They're, they haven't been figured out yet. Um, not everything has been figured out. Partly that's because our situation in life changes. It, it, it's new. Our world today is not the same as the world was 150 years ago. Uh, times have changed, uh, thankfully. Uh, not everybody agrees with that part of it, but I think thankfully. But whether you like it or not, times have changed and will continue to change. And so we can't just say, here's the way things are. We must stick with this. We have to think what moving forward looks like. And that's why I want to consider new ideas. And that's why I think you should consider new ideas as well. And the only way to get you to really consider them is by just giving them to you, uh, by having other people give them to you and not filter them, not telling you what you should believe. I want you to actually interact with the ideas and consider them. I'm not going to tell you what the right answer is. Sometimes it's because I don't know, um, because I'm trying to figure it out just like you. And sometimes it's because even if I know the right answer, you'll get more out of it if you have to figure it out for yourself. So if, if any of you have interacted with me personally in the past, you'll know that a lot of times I don't give you the answer to things. I'll give you homework. I'll say, go look here. And that might give you a clue and help you figure out what the right answer looks like. And that's not the most fun thing because it takes work. But if I just give you the answer, you're like, oh, okay. And that's the end of that. But if you have to figure it out, you grow a little bit. If you have to figure it out for yourself, it forces you to take a step up. I'm going to try to help make sure that your steps are in the right direction as best as I can. Um, That you're in sort of a general path in the right direction. So I'm not going to lay out every single step, but I'm going to try to, you know, aim it a little bit so you don't wander off and fall off a cliff. And, but I'm not going to be so rigid that you like you step here, then you step here, then you step here. So on the spectrum, you know, we're going to be somewhere in the middle between the two. So 
that's what I'm that's where I'm going for with this channel. That's what I'm going for with the people that I have conversations with, both in the past and, and in the future. And a lot of those views you're not gonna like. And I don't always like all of them. Um so but that's what we have to do if we're gonna actually see what progress looks like. We have to consider points of view that we don't necessarily like, get past the newness, the emotion, the rhetoric, and consider what's actually true. Think through what's worth keeping and what's not. So that's where we're going from here. Um, I'm going to put a couple links in the description to a few books that might help you get going. Um, they're going to be, you know, intro to some of this idea of worldview and thinking about things, you know, like, is there a God? Did Jesus rise from the dead? Um, and even if you don't necessarily have loads of interest in those questions, uh, those sorts of books are going to be a good place for you to uh, see how this is done, how how one can approach a difficult topic logically and rationally and, and think through it rather than just react with emotion and with with all of your feelings how you can think through it using your brain and 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 not just your heart heart is good but you need to engage both and we tend to only engage the one so i'll give you a couple of apologetics books i'll put those in the description i'm also going to put another book down there that helps you to have better conversations with people because we need to have conversations and not fights um, even debates are a little bit too strong because it, it's you. It sets you up to where like I'm trying to defend my side, and, and I don't think that's right. I don't want to beat the other person. I want to come away having grown. I want to come away knowing more than when I started the conversation. I don't. I don't want to be in the same place at the end of the conversation I was at the beginning of it, and I want to come away with with tools that I can use to think through things further. So I'll put a link to a couple apologetic books and another book that's going to help you have good conversations with people. So take a look at those. Those will help. And um, stick around as we uh, cover some more topics that I think think will help us start to find a path forward. Because there are problems. And recognize our problem, recognizing there's problems really is the first step. But if we want to do something more than just be critical, we have to figure out what it looks like to move forward. And that's what we're going to be doing in this series now. We're going to start looking at a path forward, what it looks like to move forward. So talk to you next week.